Hello everyone, this is Remlays from 40k Theories, and welcome to this new episode of 40k Lore for Newcomers. For this episode, nominated on Patreon by Darks, we will be taking a brief look at the Dark Angel Space Marine chapter. This video will be a brief overview for certain events that may be explored in greater depth within additional videos within the future. So without further ado, let's begin. What is it to be a Dark Angel? It is to be one of the First Legion, the Honored, the Sons of the Lion. It is to never yield to the will of heretics. It is to know that a moment of laxity spawns a lifetime of heresy. With every breath, we who follow in the footsteps of the Lion remember. We will never forget. Never forgive. The Dark Angels are a Loyalist Space Marine chapter who hold the honour of being directly descended from the very first Space Marine Legion. Like all Space Marines, each member of the Dark Angels chapter is a genetically enhanced transhuman super soldier that is larger, stronger, and more resilient than baseline humans. Despite the numerous victories and accolades that the Dark Angels have acquired over the millennia, the chapter is one that is shrouded in secrecy, and many of its battle brothers remain unaware of the chapter's past. The true extent of the chapter's dark history is known only to a select few, such as those high-ranking officers that comprise the members of the chapter's inner circle, and many secrets are withheld even from them in a hierarchy of secrecy. The chapter has garnered an impressive reputation for not only its formidable prowess upon the battlefield, but also with their warriors displaying strict discipline, tenacity, and an unshakable resolve as they stand in the defense of the Imperium. In secret, however, the chapter is embarked on an eternal quest to absolve themselves of their past sins, a mission that, in the eyes of the Dark Angels aware of said sins, takes precedence above all other matters. Despite the suspicion that the chapter has drawn from other Imperial organizations, such as the Inquisition, few can deny that the Dark Angels are one of the greatest and most respected of all Space Marine chapters. Men may keep secrets for good reasons. Initially created with the intention of being THE Space Marine Legion, the Dark Angels would be known during the Terran Unification Wars as simply the Emperor's Angels of Death. This original Legion was divided into six specialist formations, known in Imperial records as the Hexagrammaton, or as it was more commonly called, the Six Wings. These wings, which would later become known by the Caliber Knight terms of Deathwing, Ravenwing, Dreadwing, Firewing, Ironwing, and Stormwing were created with specific purposes and specializations in mind, such as aerial combat, heavy weaponry, fast attack, and so on. Over time, as additional legions were established by the Emperor, the Angels of Death would become the sole Space Marine Legion to retain aspects of the Hexagrammaton within their legion's command structure. The Angels of Death would take part in many battles during the final years of the Terran Unification Wars, and as more and more of the Legione Astartes were founded, the First Legion, as the Angels of Death would become more commonly known, would set the standard by which each successive Legion would be judged. As Imperial forces embarked upon the Emperor's Great Crusade, the First Legion would eventually become reunited with their Primarch, Lionel Johnson, after rediscovering the feudal world of Caliban. Johnson would rename the Legion to the Dark Angels, in reference to a specific Caliban Knight legend regarding Angels of Darkness that battled against evil, and Caliban would also become the homeworld of the Legion. Under Johnson's command, the Dark Angels would begin to rack up an impressive tally of victories, with only the Lunar Wolves Legion bringing a greater number of worlds into compliance during the early days of the Great Crusade. Eventually, the Lion would order that a number of his Dark Angels, under the command of his close friend and second-in-command, Luther, were to return to Caliban in order to act, at least officially, as both a garrison force and to oversee the induction of new Legion recruits. 
This decree, seen by many, including Luther, as a censure, was in response to a failed assassination of the Primarch that Luther had apparently considered allowing to happen. Little did the Primarch realize that this act would begin to sow the seeds of heresy within his legion, although it would be decades before anyone knew the extent of the coming betrayal. As the Great Crusade marched on, the Dark Angels would take part in the Dulin campaign against the Farsh Empire alongside the warriors of the Space Wolves Legion. During the final hours of this campaign, Lionel Johnson and the Space Wolves Primarch Lehman Russ would come to blows with one another due to Johnson slaying the Tyrant of Fash, as Russ claimed that he was to have the honor of killing the Despot. This would result in the two Primarchs engaging in a short but savage duel, with the warriors of their respective legions shouting their encouragement to their Primarchs. Battered, bruised, and exhausted from their fight, Lehman Russ would burst into laughter, realizing that the reason for their fight was both ridiculous and petty. In response, Johnson, who thought that the Space Wolf Primarch was mocking him, laid him out with a single blow before the Dark Angels departed from the world. This evolved into a tradition between the Space Wolves and the Dark Angels that whenever their forces meet, a warrior from each chapter is chosen to take part in a reenactment of this now legendary duel. For a time, the Dark Angels would be regarded as one of the most powerful Space Marine legions, in terms of boasting both a high quality and quantity of troops. This would change, however, following the onset of the Rangdon Xenocides, arguably the bloodiest and most brutal series of conflicts of the Great Crusade. During the course of the third campaign against the highly aggressive and technologically advanced Rangdon species, the Dark Angels would successfully defend the northern boundaries of the Imperium before eventually driving the Xenos into extinction. While the Imperium's northern territories managed to avoid destruction, the cost incurred by the Dark Angels was extremely high, as the Legion would lose over 50,000 Battle Brothers over the course of the conflict. The Legion would never truly recover from the losses sustained during this campaign, and the 13th Legion, the Ultramarines, would go on to become the most numerous Legion for the remainder of the Crusade. When the Horus Heresy began, Lionel Johnson and his Dark Angels would remain loyal to the Imperium. Prior to beginning his rebellion in earnest, the traitorous warmaster Horus Lupercal would order for Lionel Johnson to embark on a campaign against a separatist human civilization known as the Gordian League, intending on preventing the First Legion from being able to reinforce Terra. It was during the course of this campaign that Johnson would learn of Horus's treachery. After the Dark Angels successfully defeated the Gordians, the Warmaster would dispatch the Night Lord's Traitor Legion to intercept the Loyalists, leading to the events of the Thramas Crusade. Over the course of the next three years, the Dark Angels would prove to be a dangerous and tenacious foe for the Traitors. The Loyalists destroyed over 20% of the Night Lord's Legion, alongside many of their Titan Legion allies from the Legio Ulricon, and would even take several prisoners, including Savitar, the Night Lord's first captain, in the process. The Dark Angels would attempt to make their journey to Terra, but due to the creation of a warp storm known as the Ruin Storm, the Legion would become temporarily lost within the warp. However, Thanks to a Xenos artifact called the Pharos Beacon, the Dark Angels were able to guide their ships towards the realm of Ultramar, where the Ultramarines Primarch Rebute Gilliman had established a contingency plan to preserve as much of the Imperium as possible, with what became known as Imperium Secundus. The Legion would be joined shortly thereafter by the Blood Angels Legion and their Primarch Sanguinius. This trio of Primarchs would rule Imperium Secundus until its eventual dissolution, with Johnson nearly destroying parts of Macrag in order to flush out the Night Lord's Primarch, Conrad Kurz. When the Loyalists learned that Terra still stood, the Dark Angels, Ultramarines, and Blood Angels would set course for the Imperial Throne World. 
following the Second Battle of Devon, the Dark Angels and the Ultramarines would engage a Traitor Legion blockade in order to buy the Blood Angels the time needed for them to make their way through a breach in the Ruin Storm and successfully reach Terra. The Legion would then begin journeying to each of the Traitor Legion homeworlds, scouring them of all life so that Horus would be prevented from receiving additional reinforcements. The secondary purpose of this tactic was intended to draw some of the traitor forces away from Terra, giving the Loyalists greater odds of victory during the battle. Following the Siege of Terra, the Dark Angels would return to their homeworld of Caliban, only to be fired upon by the world's planetary defenses. It would be revealed that in Johnson's absence, those Dark Angels stationed upon Caliban under Luther's command had grown bitter towards their Primarch and the Imperium at large, before eventually turning traitor. This would lead to a fierce battle between Loyalist and traitor forces, which would even see a chaos enhance Luther and the Lion engage one another upon the field of battle. As the Loyalists maintained their bombardment upon the world, a massive warp rift would engulf the planet. The Traitor Dark Angels, now known as the Fallen Angels, would be dragged into the warp before being scattered across time and space. This tear in the fabric of reality, combined with the damage caused by the prolonged orbital bombardment, would result in the destruction of Caliban, transforming the world into little more than an asteroid field with only the shielded fragment containing the Legion's fortress monastery being left habitable. While Luther would be found and taken prisoner by the Loyalist Dark Angels, their Primarch would vanish without a trace, never to be seen again. Brothers, here the Codex Astartes calls upon officers to exhort their troops. Yet, we are the Dark Angels and need no fiery oratory. You know what must be done. Since the destruction of their homeworld, the Dark Angels have become a fleet-based chapter, with their flagship and fortress monastery being forged from the largest surviving fragment of Caliban, becoming an immense ship known simply as the Rock. Over the course of the next 10,000 years, the Dark Angels would prove instrumental in many conflicts against the forces of Chaos and Xenos alike, such as the Siege of Rax and the War of the Beast. One of the chapter's more notable conflicts in recent years would be the battle for Piscina IV, which pitted the Dark Angels against a massive Orc Horde. The sheer size of this horde was a result of an alliance forged between the Orc warlords Gazgul Magorok Thraka and Nazdrek Ag Urdgrub. The reason behind the Orc's invasion of Piscina, which in itself came to be seen by many as a prelude to the Third Armageddon War, was intended to field test the Orc's newly developed teleporter technology. The initial tests of this technology would prove highly successful, and would allow the Orcs to bring numerous reinforcements from off-world. However, prolonged use of the teleporter would burn out many of the generators and engines that were being used to power it. This would lead to the Orcs assaulting Piscina's planetary capital of Caladus Harbor, as the Xenos sought to capture the world's primary power generators to fuel the teleporter. A force of Dark Angels under the command of Belial the then master of the Third Company would engage the Orcs in a brutal and bloody conflict, holding them at bay long enough for Imperial reinforcements to arrive and eventually drive the Xenos from the planet. Despite the numerous battlefield accolades that the chapter has acquired over the millennia, the one mission that takes precedence above all other matters for the chapter is their hunt for the Fallen. Should the chapter ascertain the location of one of the Fallen during the middle of a battle, then the Dark Angels will simply abandon their current objectives and even their battlefield allies in favour of pursuing their traitorous kin, intent on either capturing or killing them. If one of the Fallen is successfully captured, then his fate will be left in the hands of the chapter's interrogator chaplains, who will seek to make him repent for his crimes. Should the Fallen show regret for his past actions, 
then the chaplain will grant him the mercy of a swift death. If the fallen angel remains stubborn and refuses to atone for his sins, then he will die a slow and agonizing death. If our quarry stands, we lay them low. If our quarry flees, we run them down. If our quarry pleads, we listen not. The Dark Angels, along with their successor chapters, are a group that is collectively known within its own ranks as the Unforgiven. At a glance, the Dark Angels appear to be a Codex-compliant chapter, but on closer examination, the chapter does diverge from the tenets of the Codex in a number of areas. The main divergence is seen within the structure of the chapter's first and second companies, the Death Wing and the Raven Wing, the only two original wings of the Dark Angels Legion that continue to exist within the present day. The Warriors of the Death Wing, with the exception of the recently inducted Primaris Marines, are formed exclusively into Terminator squads, while the members of the Raven Wing are comprised of fast attack units such as bikes and land speeders. The majority of the Dark Angels know little, if anything, about their chapter's sordid past, and it is only once a warrior becomes inducted into the Death Wing do they learn the true extent of their past sins. This means that many of the Raven Wing, whose primary role is to hunt the Fallen, know nothing of their mission's true nature on many occasions. The other major divergence from the Codex Astartes is seen with the chapters Inner Circle, which is comprised of many high-ranking officers within the chapter, such as the Chapter Master, Company Captains, Librarians, and the Interrogator Chaplains. It is the role of the Inner Circle to ensure that all knowledge regarding their chapter's past and the existence of the Fallen remains a closely guarded secret. So determined are the Dark Angels in ensuring that none know of their secret shame that many who have come close to discovering the truth, be they civilians, space marines, or inquisitors, meet with unfortunate accidents. With the introduction of Primaris Marines, the Dark Angels initially welcomed this new breed of Astartes into their ranks only begrudgingly, if only so as to not raise suspicion within Imperial authorities and risk their secrets being discovered. Whilst those Primaris as they have created and trained themselves, along with any who chose to cross the Rubicon Primaris, are as trusted as others from the same rank, those from the Grey Shields created by Belisarius' call remain a source of concern. However, the chapter's Supreme Grandmaster, Azriel, took a chance by inducting a worthy Primaris candidate into the Death Wing, and the success of this action has somewhat helped the situation. Outside of battle, the chapter operates in a manner similar in nature to that of a monastic order with the Battle Brothers of the chapter devoting much of their free time to praise the Emperor of Mankind. Though much to the chagrin of the Ecclesiarchy, the chapter maintains that the Emperor is merely a man as opposed to a god. The Gene Seed of the Dark Angels is noted for its purity, displaying no obvious psychological flaws or physical mutations, similar in manner to that of the Ultramarines chapter. While their gene seed is more stable than that of other first founding chapters, it has been noted that for one reason or another, the High Lords of Terror were reluctant to utilize Dark Angel's genetic stock for the purpose of founding new Space Marine chapters. However, following the return of Rebute Gilliman, this unwillingness to create new Unforgiven chapters has somewhat subsided. Despite this, the Dark Angels have sired an impressive number of successor chapters over the millennia, with many of which also aiding their primogenitors in their eternal hunt for the Fallen. This has led to many suspecting that, despite officially being separate and distinct chapters, the Unforgiven continue to act as a single legion behind closed doors. Interestingly, this is not viewed with the same level of concern as it might once have been by some, Many on Terra and Mars view the pseudo-legion of the Unforgiven as a potentially useful counterweight to Gilliman and the Ultramarines, 
And although the accusations of Legion building are louder than ever, the Dark Angels are also more vocally supported by elements of the Inquisition as well. And that concludes this episode of 40k Law for Newcomers. If you liked this video, consider supporting us on Patreon for more content. To those who are new to 40k, we hope you learned something. So leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.